Jesus warned that in the last days there would come many false prophets and teachers that would deceive many people. There's a lot of confusion over who these false teachers and false prophets are and many people don't know how to identify them. So in this video, I'm going to show you five signs that you can use to identify false prophets and false teachers. Today I'm going to show you five signs that you can use to identify false prophets and false teachers. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to point you to some really helpful resources where you can go deeper into these issues. Sign number one, self-promotion. False teachers and false prophets promote themselves. Even though they talk about Jesus, their ministries revolve around themselves. That's why their ministries are named after them and they have photos of themselves all over the place for everyone to see. They consider themselves to be more important than the message. They use titles of respect like apostle, reverend, teacher, pastor, father. They invite you to a Billy Graham crusade or an apostle so-and-so's place or, or to see a particular pastor's church but they don't invite you to a Jesus Christ crusade. They don't want to present the Jesus of the Bible to you. They want to present themselves. In contrast, Jesus said that the greatest person in the kingdom of God is the one who considers themselves last and that we should not allow other people to address us with titles of respect because we're all brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God. Sign number two, popularity. False teachers and false prophets are popular. They tell people what they want to hear not what they need to hear. These con men don't have much conflict with the system because they teach things that people in the system already value. They are popular because they teach popular topics. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know, maybe your back's against the wall. Maybe you're in a financial crisis. Maybe it could be that your, your business is not flourishing like you want it to flourish. Maybe your family is not where it ought to be but you so desperately want to move forward in your life. When you go through the day saying, I am blessed, blessings come looking for you. I am talented, talent comes looking for you. You may not feel up to par, but when you say, I am healthy, health starts heading your way. I am strong, strength starts tracking you down. You're inviting that into your life. You need a new home, you've got it. You need a better car and transportation, you've got it. You need peace and harmony in your home, you've got it. If you believe those words, I prophesy them into your being. This is your day, saith God. For I have sent my servant to prophesy life to you, abundance to you, health to you, saith the Lord. So do not draw back. But take this word and mix it with the action of faith. And you see that mixing of action with your faith will bring about the miracle you need this day in your life, saith the Lord. Whoop, I love to prophesy. Oh, I love to, I, I tell you, I love to prophesy. Amen. Jesus said, woe to you when all men speak well of you, because they've always treated the false prophets in that way. Jesus didn't teach a message that was compatible with the system. He said that he didn't come to bring peace but division and that even our own families would be divided because of him. When someone wanted to follow him, he didn't try to sell the message with attractive baits. Instead, he told them clearly what the cost was for discipleship. And if people were not willing to leave their possessions, their family ties, to take up their cross and to be willing to die for the gospel, he wouldn't accept them as disciples. True prophets are rejected by the system. They're despised and all kinds of evil things are said against them because the world cannot tolerate the true message of repentance that they preach. So when you see a religious leader who has a lot of popularity, you need to be hearing some spiritual alarm bells going off. Don't be deceived. Sign number three, disobedience. False prophets don't live according to the teachings of Jesus. They disobey Jesus and they justify their disobedience. Whoever says they know Jesus but they disobey Him is a liar. These con men hardly ever mention the teachings of Jesus. Instead, they talk about the law of Moses, the Proverbs of Solomon, uh, Paul's epistles or any other scripture that they can twist for their own benefit. But they hardly mention the requirements that Jesus laid out for following Him because they themselves do not practice them. That's why even after people have been going to church for years, they hardly know anything about what Jesus taught. Could you name, say, for example, 10 things that Jesus said for us to do? Actually, no, I couldn't. Five things. 
Not even five. Okay. All right. One? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't really know much about the Bible, you know what I mean? But okay. Yeah, okay. I'm a Christian, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't really know much about the Bible. Right. But... It's loving other people and loving God is... That, those are two commandments. I can't tell you ten things, I don't think. I'm sorry. All right. So you believe in Jesus? Yes, most and definitely. Could you name ten commands of Jesus? No, I can't. How familiar are you with what Jesus taught? Uh, really familiar. I learned the Bible. You know. yeah. can, you, can you name like 10 things that Jesus said? Not off the top of my head. Could you think think of 10 things that he perhaps said? Um, not, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah not, <laughs> not necessarily off the top okay. of my head. In contrast, true Christians live in harmony with the teachings of Jesus. Their role model is Jesus. That's why their lives are consistent with Christ's message and example. Sign number four, lying signs and wonders. Jesus said that false prophets would be able to do signs and wonders so impressive that they could almost deceive true Christians. He said that on judgment day, many people would say that they did miracles in his name, cast out demons in his name and did all kinds of signs in the name of Jesus. But he'll say to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who always did evil. In contrast, Jesus did genuine miracles and healed many people. But he would tell them not to publicize the miracle. He would try to hide his miracles as much as possible. Because the miracles were genuine, the miracles would publicize themselves without much advertising on his behalf. Whereas the phonies are the ones who are always publicizing the supposed miracles they do themselves. More importantly, signs and wonders don't prove anything by themselves. Even secular magicians are able to deceive many people with tricks and gimmicks that are able to produce the illusion of a genuine miracle. So put your faith in Jesus, not in signs and wonders, or you'll be easily deceived. Sign number five, materialism. False prophets and teachers love money. They preach about economic prosperity and having a comfortable life right now in almost all of their sermons. I can dream as long as I want to. I can believe God as long as I want to. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. That money, you don't belong to the wicked. You belong to us. And I want you to get in the right place. Money, come to me now. And Paul even tells us in the Bible that when we give of our finances, that's like sowing seed. Inside that seed is the Word of God. And the Word of God is also inside this seed. Now, are you going to keep the seed in your pocket? Or are you going to plant the seed and make the donation? I have a feeling that somebody that wants a credit card debt wiped out, that if you'll use your faith as you sow, as you sow the thousand on a credit card, as you use your faith, as you use your faith, God's going to wipe out your credit card indebtedness. Let me tell you, this thousand dollar seed is breaking the shackles, it's breaking the shackles, it's breaking the chains. And to me, a thousand dollar seed is proof that you have conquered greed. I like new money. Most beautiful thing on earth is a hundred dollar bill. I hadn't seen a woman as good looking as a hundred dollar bill. There's something about a hundred dollar bill that excites you. They promote the middle class or higher lifestyles, and they promise economic and spiritual benefits to anyone who would give them money. But they hardly ever tell you to give the money to the people who really need it. In contrast, the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Jesus himself said that we cannot serve two masters, that we will love one and hate the other. Ask yourself, who do these preachers love, God or money? The early Christians revolutionized the world because they believed in the teachings of Jesus. They lived together and shared everything they had one with another. They would sell their possessions and their properties and give the money to the apostles who would distribute to the people who were in need. They didn't keep the money for themselves. Now you have five signs that you can use to identify a false prophet or teacher. So when you see these signs in a religious leader, beware because they're probably a charlatan.